Hey YouTube, this video is about mental health awareness, your own mental health awareness for 2020 and it starts now. And it's been happening for a lot of people throughout 2020 because it's been such a horrific year and a lot of us have been, you know, self-reflecting, analyzing our friendships, our relationships, what is it that we want out of life? What are we willing to deal with? What are we not willing to deal with? How are we going to proceed? And how to just find that balance between accepting what we currently have versus what we really want. Just in the meantime, because it's been so challenging being out, being around friends, family, traveling, all those lovely things we like to do, even going out to eat. Like some people, like I haven't been to a restaurant since I think like the summertime. <laughs> and this is December. And so the name of the article is below and it's basically about not sacrificing yourself too much and leaving toxicity behind, not carrying it over into 2021. And whether that toxicity be in friends, um, your significant others, family members, or even yourself, because we too engage in toxic behaviors or things that are not beneficial to us having good, stable, sound mental health. And we do those things because we have needs, we want to feel validated, we want to be desired, we want to be wanted, we want to be accepted. And so we think that we have to, or convince ourselves that we have to tolerate certain things to get that need met. But what is the cost to doing those things? The cost is too high. If you're giving of yourself over and over and over, particularly to the same person or the same situation, is that person filling you back up? Or do you have another outlet or somewhere else you can go so that you can get replenished? And a lot of times that's why mentally we just get so exhausted. Or if somebody says, oh, let's go out, you know, for a walk. And in your mind, you're like, oh my gosh, like I just cannot deal with this person today. I just do not have the energy to deal with this person today. But we say yes, because we want to maintain that, that friendship. But is that a friendship? Or what type of friendship is that? There are different levels of friendship. And I do have an article somewhere on my website about that. And I know people do define the word friend very differently. <laughs> um, particularly myself, I, I take that word very seriously. And it takes me a lot to call someone my friend. And I have to keep reminding myself there's different degrees of friendship. <laughs> so that's something I am continuing to work on and learning to be at peace with. Everybody's not going to be what I really call a friend. So that's all I'm going to say about that. That article is somewhere. <laughs> if this kind of behavior starts off when we're young, um, we're told go to, go to school, make friends. So you're on a playground and you want to be liked and you do want to make friends and you want to get along with people. You want to be with the in crowd or whatever. And so you may do things to fit in. You know, I don't want to... <laughs> I'm trying to think of an easy example. I was going to say like you might shoplift because you want to fit in with a certain crowd. but <laughs> And that may sound silly, but then there's like people that want to smoke cigarettes, people that, you know, might want to smoke you know, weed, or they might want to drink, or they might just want to go to clubs a lot, or they want to just have sex just so a certain person will like them, or to be a part of this crowd, or, you know, this group of people. And so it may start off in an innocent way. However, a lot of us carry that behavior, those behaviors into our adult life. And so even though you start off in kindergarten, you know, you're giving your fruit snacks to somebody because you want that somebody to like you, that's really innocent. Or you want to share your juice box or something because you want this person to like you or play with you on a playground. And so you share your toys, even though this person bullies you and they injure you like emotionally and psychologically, but you're still doing things that they want you to do because you want to be liked. That carries over. And our childhood plays a huge part into our adult thought processes. We learn these behaviors when we're kids. And now we're 30, 40, I just turned 51, and it's, it's time to stop. Don't carry this over into 2021. If there's someone toxic in your life, or if you're engaging in toxic behaviors, when you're allowing people to emotionally or physically, or even spiritually injure you or abuse you, 
that's a behavior you need to work on not accepting. And so it's toxic for you to continue to put your energy and your time into that person when all they're doing is basically tearing you down and hurting you. So it's not only that person is toxic, you're toxic for allowing it. Don't take that into 2021. This is the time, especially after everything that's happened in 2020, it has got to get better. Even though COVID is still here and it's still gonna be here, probably I'm sure at least until the fall, Okay, that's out of our control. I mean, we can control being safe and not hanging out, you know, in groups of people. We can wear masks, use hand sanitizer. For those of us who want to get vaccines, you can get the vaccine. But we can't control when COVID actually goes away. However, you can control your personal life and how you view things and how you view people and how you interact with certain people and whether or not you allow certain people in your life. Because someone comes to you does not mean you have to allow them space in your life. And also stop letting people live rent free in your head. If someone makes it clear to you that they're basically done with you, even if, it, even if it was someone, excuse me, that was close to you at one point and you felt equally close to them, if they decide, you know, things are over, learn to be at peace with that. Don't sit around or work on not sitting around thinking about, oh, I wonder how they're doing. I wonder how their mental health is. I wonder how they're coping with isolation. That's toxic because they're not even speaking to you. So why are you putting your mental energy into being concerned about someone who doesn't even want to speak to you? That's toxic. Focus your time and energy on people who reciprocate the time and energy that you put into them and into their life. And that's the key thing is just having things being reciprocal. And there are ebbs and flows. Like if you have a group of close friends, one of you might have a bad day. So the rest of you gather around, not in person, but like on Zoom or text messages or whatever, and encourage that person and lift them up and send them, you know, encouraging messages. That's fine. And then, you know, when you have a bad day, they do, they do, excuse me, the same for you. That's what I'm talking about when I say reciprocation. Every day, everything is not equal, but you take turns lifting each other up and you keep each other balanced. And that's the thing. We also need to stop the savior complex or like for me, I like to help people. I come from a clinical background and I always say it takes a certain type of personality to even want to do a certain type of job. Like me, I'm, I'm not running into a burning building to save anybody, let alone like, oh, let me run in and save somebody's cat or a pet. I'm just like, no. <laughs> and, and please don't be offended because I do know a lot of people who really are animal lovers. <laughs> and so don't be offended by me saying that. I'm just being honest. Um, even, you know, being in law enforcement, I do like investigative work. I do. But taking a job where, you know, I need to wear a vest because I might get shot that day, I'm not doing that. No. <laughs> but psychologically and mental health wise, helping people figure themselves out so that they can be better for themselves, that's what I love to do. And I'm always told how understanding I am, how patient I am, I'm a good listener and things like that. I'm retired. And so I need to not carry that over into people who are not in my inner circle. And so if you're one of those people where you just really like to help people, you like to be there for people, that's fine. But just make sure it's reciprocated because whoever you give your, your time and your energy to, you're giving out of yourself. Or are they putting back in? If you're around someone and when you leave them, you're just completely exhausted and tired. That's the sign that they're not putting back into your life. And so you need to think about that. At what cost are you giving to constantly help this person or be there for this person when they're not able to give back to you? We also think if I help this person, this is the savior complex. If I help this person, I'll feel needed, I'll feel validated. You, you probably will. But after they're fixed, they won't need you anymore. And then you're going to be like, why did I do this for this person? And they can't even do, you know, something simple that I want them to do. It's not your job to fix other people. If someone's in your inner circle, and like I was saying about that balance and they're having a bad day or they just want to bounce something off of you, that's fine. But if you're always the one giving to them, after a while, you're going to be so far down, you're going to need professional help. <laughs> 
you're gonna be like how did I get here and how do I get myself out of this depression or out of this rut or out of just being mentally exhausted all the time so think about the cost if you have people in your life that you're always giving to giving to giving to and they're taking and not replenishing you think about that is that the type of relationship that you want to have the key to all of this is maintaining first of all creating and maintaining boundaries for yourself physically mentally relational boundaries physical boundaries those are things you need to create for yourself and then maintain them you can tell someone you know i'm not going to tolerate you speaking to me in a disrespectful tone but if they continue to speak to you that way and you continue to tolerate it what makes you think that they're ever going to stop that's something you need to decide for yourself that you're not going to deal with. And I'm pretty sure I just did a video and an article about that. I did. It was one of my relationship red flags video. Or was it? It might have been. No, 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 no. I'm lying to you. The truth is <laughs> the article in the video was something about people treat you how you allow them to treat you. So go read that article or watch the video and you can hear and see and read what I said about that. When we seek validation and acceptance from other people, does it really matter? Do you need for someone to validate you? If you're, I was gonna say in reality, but we all have our own realities and sometimes they coincide. Like if I say, oh, the sky is you know cloudy today and someone says, yeah, it is. Okay, that's something simple. So, it, <laughs> but if there's something going on in your life and you know that something's not right, like say you get a flat tire and you're just like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be late. It's a, I have a flat tire. You know, I need to call somebody, call triple A. Like that's valid. You don't need someone to say to you, oh wow, yeah, you have a flat tire. You're going to be late to where you're going. You don't need validation for that. So there's just certain things that happen in your life that you know in your heart and in your gut that it's just not right validate yourself analyze the situation analyze how you feel about the situation and determine if it's valid you know you know you hopefully better than someone else and on the off chance that you don't that's when i recommend that you go to counseling you know find a therapist find a mental health professional to talk to find a psychiatrist or a psychologist or something someone to help you balance yourself out and to learn how to sustain yourself and to sustain your mental health in a positive way and not always need to seek out someone to be in your life to do that for you regardless of what happens in your life you may be the only person that's always going to be there for you and i'm saying that thinking about even if you're married what if one of you passes you're still with you the other person is gone you need to stand on your own two feet you need to maintain your mental health and also your physical health and it can be challenging because we do want companionship we want someone want someone excuse me around and, and for people to help us but be your own advocate and it's not selfish to think of a situation and say well this isn't good for me and so I'm going to step back, it's okay. Because you need to take care of you because a lot of times another person won't. Either because they don't care enough to or because they don't really understand where you're coming from or what you're telling them. You can tell someone how you feel, but they can't feel it. So they're only going to be able to help you but so much. And so pay attention to that and listen to your inner feelings. So to wrap this up, for 2021 leave toxicity in 2020 do not carry that over do not feel bad about it work on continuing to be the best you that you can be and if you haven't been working on that start now and if you need professional help that's, that's fine like there's no shame in needing help we all need help i believe at one point or another and even being in the clinical field Every conference or workshop I would go to, there was always a block of time scheduled for self-care. Like, what are you doing to help improve you? What are you doing to maintain your sanity and to keep your mental health balanced out? 
it's not selfish to want to be the best you that you can be. And if that means cutting out negative people or toxic people, that's what you need to do. Because if you keep them around, that's you engaging in toxic behavior and you're only damaging yourself. So I have two questions that I'm going to read to you because I might look at it and forget. And these will be in the article. And the first question is, what are some behaviors you have that you know you need to discontinue in order to be your best self? in 2021? That's the first question I would like you to answer. The second question is, what was the defining moment when you realized you needed to change those behaviors and or that thought process that kept you engaging on those behaviors? And so those are the questions and I do hope this video was helpful to you and I do hope it makes you think about your life, the people in your life, the situations you get into, the situations you allow yourself to stay into. It's a whole thing out here. And so I just want all of you to be as well mentally as possible. And it takes work. So I hope that this was helpful to you. And if you enjoyed this video, you know, go ahead and click the like button, subscribe, click the notification bell, share this video, um, leave comments below, and just, you know, work on being the best to you. And if you need to leave some things behind in 2021, leave them behind 2020 has had enough garbage of its own do not carry those bags with you into a new year thank you